My name is Steve Webb from Web Yates Engineers and uh, this is the new Stone Age exhibition at the Building Centre. We started working with Pierre Bido about 15 years ago designing stone staircases or traditional stone staircases for people's houses. We worked a lot with stone after that. We developed with Pierre different techniques for post-tensioning and reinforcing stone and really pushing the way that stone is used structurally forward. We've been working with Amin for about the same period of time and when Amin's project at Clark & Close started, we found an opportunity to introduce structural stone and Amin, Pierre and I all worked together on that project. And we've been really interested in developing stone design and developing technologies in stone and really rediscovering the use of stone structurally for architecture going forward. In this exhibition we have a 12 metre floor span, 450 mil deep, post-tension stone, completely viable way of making a 12 metre span floor in an office. The carbon footprint of that section of floor is something like a tenth of the equivalent in steel or concrete. So it's very, very low carbon. It's also beautiful to look at. I'm uh, Pierre Bidot. I am um, a stonemason and I'm working at the Stone Masonry Company uh, in Stamford. Um, the Stone Masonry Company is a small business, a small stone masonry business, specializing in load bearing masonry. Uh, as well as post-tension and, and reinforced uh, stone structure. We have been in the last uh, 10 years developing a, a partnership with uh, Steve Webb, engineer, and uh, Aminta, um, architect, um, trying to push forward the use of stone, not as only um, a decorative uh, material, but as a load-bearing material as it used to be a long time ago. My name is Amin Taha and I work in a practice called Group Work. We're standing on top of 15 Clark and Wall Close, uh, which is featured in the exhibition at the building centre because it's made of limestone and load-bearing limestone in the form of an exoskeleton. While we were working on um, a stone staircase, which is um, following the same principles as all medieval and Georgian staircases, which is part cantilevered, part reciprocal, we were talking to the stonemasons on that project uh, about the prospect of building in load-bearing stone. Surely there's a method of doing it which doesn't involve cutting blocks into slithers, post-tensioning them with a stainless steel rod. And uh, uh, these French stone masons um, uh, looked at us in this belief that we didn't know that load-bearing stone in France is called austerity construction because it's cheaper than concrete or steel. And of course, it's the simplest method of construction. So 15 Clark and Well Close was a close collaboration between engineer, architect and, and craftsman. I mean, Aminta just decided to, to go a step further in the use of stone, not having only as cladding, but as having it true to what it is made for, which is a, a load-bearing structure, a solid stone structure. Um, so based on the, the past project we, we've done with Steve Webb and, and, and Steve's knowledge uh, of uh, stone and how it behaves, um, we decided to reintroduce stone um, as pillars, as lintel, and, and, and see if it could carry the, the whole building. While we were actually at investigating on type of stone, we visited um, a quarry, and the quarry master said, we all, you know, no, no architects ever come and visit us. In fact, no stonemason ever comes and visits us. We just get asked to supply the stone, and we cut it absolutely cleanly in blocks. Those are subdivided, and then the stonemason tends to add their decoration. And the reason I mention this is because as we were wandering around the quarry, fascinated by the various quartz pockets and ammonite shells in the stone and um, various other fossils, we were asking the quarry master, well, you know, this looks quite natural to us, while most stonemasons will tell us natural is actually a, a carved in finish that's achieved with chisels and, and blow torches. Instead of us inventing a, um, a, a, a sort of a visual vocabulary addressing for the stone, why don't we allow the, uh, the, the intrinsic qualities of the stone itself and the skills of the quarry masters to be that dressing? On making that decision, it does mean that that variation in finish uh, 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 would make placing an absolutely regular window within that frame quite difficult. So if you then separate the two, the envelope and the exoskeleton, what you quickly realise is that the, the envelope can then be a fairly inexpensive uh, curtain wall 
without any of the sticks is just glazing end to end, held up um, uh, at every floor. Uh, pretty much uniform, perfectly sealed, uh, so it's waterproofed and weathered uh, without the worry of waterproofing on every, every opening and you don't have to tool any of your stone either. You have to start using low energy materials. Timber is one of those and people are advocating for the use of timber quite widely. But there are things that you won't always use timber for. Um, Nobody's going to make a nuclear power station out of CLT, for example. You know, there are, there are opportunities to use other materials. So stone, because stone is very, very high strength, maybe two and a half times stronger than the average concrete. Those materials exist in the ground. They're there to be dug up. They're there to be used uh, in a relatively unprocessed form. Um, and actually with modern analysis and design, post-tensioning stone, using stone in cleverer ways, better statistical analysis of stone's properties, we can unleash the potential to use stone for, well, not only infrastructure, but um, other big, uh, big buildings, applications where you can't use timber, uh, and actually as a replacement for big components of buildings.